your pages look less like web pages, more like mobile apps. And the jQuery will allow you uh, to do that. For example, to, to continue uh, on with this, if you make it a link, make these guys links. Pardon me? Yeah. So I'm just going to copy this link three times. Now if we view this, in here, notice, again, it's a little hard to see. Notice what that looks like. Again, this indicates that this is a link all right, that you can click on. So this looks like a button in a mobile application. So that's what I mean. Apply the techniques that are discussed in Chapter 6 to make the page look a little more like uh, the page or pages to look more like a mobile application than uh, a website. I mean, I, I've seen jQuery when uh, out there being used to manufacture buttons on, I guess, traditional pages. Besides buttons, is there an example of something that really just speaks of jQuery in terms of the look? I mean, like I said, because I like I said, buttons and jQuery on traditional pages have always kind of been there for the more well, again, guess, exotic look. Again, if you look, there's the footer, all right? Um, that that uh, there's a footer element that you can use. There's a header element that you can use. There's a link element that you can use, giving a little um, arrow thing for the link. There's a navigation bar, a nav bar that you can show. Review through, again, review through um, the chapter, and you'll see examples of this. Let's see. One thing they show is, I'll just copy this code again. Actually, I'll copy this whole chunk of code.
there's the list view that we have, and the elements look like options like this. Down here, it's a little hard to see, but there's a nav bar. All right? In other words, there's link, 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 and it's done up this way as a navigation bar that stays on the bottom of the, uh, bottom of the page, bottom of the screen. I've actually seen like a, a website like that, and it does look pretty cool. Yeah, it does. And again, you know, you look at this, you don't see the fact that it is from an HTML page, and again, and it sort of has that app-ish look to it. Yeah, they look a lot like yeah, uh, that's the one thing they even discuss in the book is they say that uh, given the fact that the, uh, that the I, uh, iOS sort of got the jump on everyone in, in this world, uh, people kind of have the expectations of the apps kind of to look like iPhone apps. So jQuery was kind of written and developed with that in mind. Well, Android really doesn't have like a, something like that, do they? Uh, something like what? Does Android have its own logo? Yeah, that's a good question. I don't think it's as, as it's not it's definitely not as defined as um, as the iPhone uh, world. That, that's yeah, for sure. Just made their own like look. So. Right. So uh, is this pretty much just limited to the, the mobile area? I mean, is there weaknesses or? If it goes into a full version, is that a definitely no-no, or um, are you interpreting that correctly? Or? Um, this is what it looks like in Internet Explorer. Let's see what it looks like in Firefox. And would you use media queries to break that up so it doesn't appear like that? Um, well, again, this is this is getting back to the tools in the toolbox. All right. Um, one way that you could do it is you could use the user agent redirect to send people either to a mobile site like this, or send them to a full blown site that looked like a full blown site. All right. So. Um, I wouldn't even necessarily know if Warful would really be required here because you're not looking really at specific capabilities. Um, I don't know, well, maybe you are. Um, so that we're looking for specifically mobile. Yeah, well, again, you, that's true. You're, you're looking for specifically mobile and you're looking for HTML5 support. So, yeah, you could, you could use Warful to do that. So it's got both those um, properties. I'll throw this. Say it only has, uh, doesn't have HTML5. What, what, what you could do is you could redirect them to another page, yeah. So we'd have like three pages, three, three sets. Potentially, yeah. They even talk about in the book, you know, however fine of gradation you want to take it, you know, what levels of support. You know, you can have the desktop version, you can have a high-end mobile version, a medium mobile version, and a low-end. Uh, uh, did I say medium? I meant mobile version, and a low-end mobile version. So... However you want to differentiate that. And how do you determine that? Well, you have tools in the toolbox. You have Warful to look at specific capabilities and specific attributes of the different platforms. You have the user agent to look and identify if it's mobile or full. And then lastly, you have media queries that you can go and you can apply. Uh, one nice thing about the media queries is those can sort of be like a catch-all. Like if someone gets redirected to the wrong place, the media query will apply style sheets in a certain way and hopefully it won't look hideous for them. Now, to get back to your question about applying this on a desktop, if you look at this, you know, um, imagine this. Here, let's go. There we go. Let's make the text bigger so that we can see it. And again, forget about you know, forget about the specific that it only says link, 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 you know, let's imagine there's real links in here. I think this would be a great looking mobile website. I would, would not necessarily want to come to this on my desktop. You, you know what I mean? This, this, I don't know. This looks like something that would be great on mobile, but I wouldn't want my desktop 
have to look like so this. So would that be a case where you have one of the queries or the redirects to kind of You'd redirect segregate them? Right. them? Exactly. Exactly. You would, uh, you could, you could do a, qu a query based on the kind of device, again, either, you know, let's consider the things that, that we, we have so far. Let's back up. One thing that we have is we have that user agent query that we went over in PHP, that line of code that says mobile or not mobile. That's one thing that we could use. All right. The other thing we could use is we could use Werfel to get a more detailed profile of what the user agent is and redirect them based on that profile. All right. The third thing that we have that's not really relevant here because it doesn't involve redirection, but it involves applying style sheets is we have um, uh, media queries in CSS that we could go and we could go and we could apply things uh, on that. That's, those are our tools for differentiating between what the client is. What we have to decide for any given project is which of those tools we're going to employ. All right. Probably what I would do is, let's say I was doing this this particular application and I wanted to use a jQuery mobile framework for the mobile end of it. I probably would use either that user agent uh, detection that we went over uh, last week, all right, to send someone to a desktop site or the mobile site, then I'd build the mobile site using this jQuery mobile framework. And I'd develop the, the, the full-blown site using whatever I know about HTML and CSS, all right? I would do my best to include include files, to, to, to put include files in there, just so that I had some shared content, all right? Take, for example, this text. You know, this text might be both on my mobile page and on my full site. Well, I wouldn't want to have two copies of that laying around, so that would be something I'd slap in in an include file. All right. I'm sure you probably can. Um, I don't know if there's any examples in the book for that. Uh, I would think it's likely that you could you could tweak this some to. That's inheritance, right? When you do something like that. Pardon me. Is, is that inheritance when we? Uh, yeah. Yeah, you just modify theirs. Yeah, you, you should you should be able to go in and, and somehow customize or tweak uh, what they have, either by extending it with your own CSS file or by setting some parameters and, and options for this. Also, if, um, if you're in an Android uh, native app, mm -hmm. and you have like a store online, could you just bring like a, I don't know what it's called, maybe a web view inside the Android? Can you just bring that and actually bring something like that in there? Could you bring a web view into that? I have played with creating web views and like bringing over chunks of HTML from, from the server. I, I, I've definitely done that. I have not brought over a chunk of HTML that contained this kind of stuff in there, but I don't see any reason why you couldn't. Yeah, if you did something like this, that would just cut down programming on a native app. Yep. Like, real fast. Yep. And again, that, that's, you know, at that point, you might say, well, um, why would you even need an Android app? Well, you might need an Android app because it's cool to promote it, all right, and it's cool to do that. And if, if all it does is contain that HTML stuff, the Android app itself is very simple. It's very straightforward. It's yeah, just well, bringing... Maybe you have like a store, you know, online store, plus you got the app that does other things. Okay, fair enough. Uh, that's, fair that's enough. a good thing. Yeah, it, right. I wasn't thinking of, of an app that, that did more than just this. But yeah, you could use the native parts of the app to do native app things, and then you could, you could bring this in this way. Should be able to do that. I, I, don't, I don't see why not. Other questions? My suggestion would be to play with the code that's in Chapter 6. Take it, download it, and then work through the example and, and go in and do that. We will, uh, you know, we'll, we'll definitely go over more examples of this uh, 
to see some of the other capabilities that you can do using this framework. But again, you know, the end effect is to give someone something that looks good and looks like it was designed for mobile, even though really it's just a web page. Questions? I'm sort of curious, do you, uh, uh, since I know you have the other uh, classes, mm -hmm. do you ever do any ones with uh, like actually like doing like a shopping cart and all that stuff on the website? In, in, in the Android class? Or? No, in any of your other programs. Because um, I really want to learn, like, I'm, I'm working on building up a business site. Right. I'd like to have, like, a shopping cart with the PHP to actually, uh, right. so, you know, keeps a cart products and then sends uh, everything to the server, which probably goes to, like, a computer email or right. something like that. Um, we, we don't, in, in none of the classes do we do a shopping cart per se. In the 243 class, we definitely do uh, database, uh, database interactivity, which you could, you could adapt that to be sort of a shopping cart. So, which class is that? CISS 243, the .NET class. Uh, is that the full name, just .NET? No, um, Web Database Integration. Besides that, you know, in the interim, the, you know, the technology might have changed. There's, there's yeah. new tools, but if you develop a, a, a good foundation, then, then it's easier to, to extend it. Other questions? The um, the uh, this assignment you're talking about is this the um the week six assignment? This is the one week six, right? I posted it just today. Okay. Other questions? We'll continue on this um, next time and do even more uh, nice little um, appish looking things.